Hey, how y'all doing, man? So David Starr is doing what David Starr does, which is talking out of his ass. So he did an interview with some podcast, Wrestling Inc. Um, so Wrestling Inc. on their website. I'm going to read the transcription of what David Starr says, and I'm going to try to offer some rebuttals. Um, I, did a, I did a version of this video already. This was the second take, but it was over an hour. And I don't expect anybody to really sit down and listen to me ramble on over an hour about uh, David Starr. So I'm going to try to be concise here. Um, so David Starr says, it's a shame, but it's more egregious WWE is doing it because what's doing it means they're still running shows during the, uh, the virus um, situation. Doing it because they never had to run these tapings or do these gatherings. They, ha they have plenty of footage they could be airing. Meanwhile, AEW doesn't have that much footage. So I understand that. But there's really no excuse at this point. AEW comes out looking bad if they keep shows, keep running, and WWE shuts down. Um, keeps keeps looking bad to whom he does. That's very vague. We don't who is doing the judgments. You know, certain people can continue to work. OK, there are a lot of people who are still working. Construction workers are still working. You know, uh, landscapers are still working. There's some barbers that are still working. There's a lot of people who are still working. Not everybody is scared. Everybody is doing their own risk assessments. Let's keep going. Um, Many believe that promotions who are still running events are exploiting their performance by having them paid to work. You can't exploit you can't exploit adults, especially those adults have handlers and agents and stuff like that, which wrestlers do. That is not exploitation. It's nonsense. Um, but when you're a communist, you believe that all work is exploitation anyway. That's just the, the end all be all of it. If you are working and somebody else is getting paid from your labor then you're being exploited. That's the sort of communist idea of work. Uh, Star was asked about these promotions not stopping because the local or state governments haven't explicitly told them to stop running shows. Um, they're basically running... Well, let's continue. Let's, let's read what David Starr has to say and we'll get to it. It's capitalism. That's what it is. Of course, they're not going to do anything without government coming in and forcing their hands. It really comes down to government doing what it should be doing to begin with. We should have a mandatory lockdown for a minimum of three weeks. And we'll probably need more after that, said Starr. Um, for starters, David Starr is not a public health official. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Um, so that bottom part is nonsense. Three weeks was almost two months ago. Okay, so there's there are some states in the United States that have shut down until June, you know, and it's April. So you're talking about people who are not going to be able to work for months. Okay, um, then he says it's capitalism, dot, dot, dot. Um, capitalism is free exchange, um, using capital to make capital in a free exchange. Um, what he's talking about is nonsense because the, these companies, and he's going to mention this later, these companies cannot sell tickets. They can also not sell merchandise at live events, which means that most of these people are not making more money. They're also losing a lot of uh, viewerships on TV. So people aren't watching. They're not selling tickets. And people are not buying merchandise at the shows. That's a lot of money lost. Um, South by Southwest, Coachella, um, Stanley Cup Finals, NBA Finals, all this type of stuff has been canceled. None of these leagues are making money. WWE and AEW are spending money by having these shows. I mean, that's just kind of, they're going in the hole to pay people to show up to these shows to work a skeleton crew. And it is not. Uh, uh, if if you if your definition of capitalism is profit, there 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 probably be some profit because there's going to be advertising, and WWE are going to benefit from uh, ESPN not having any uh, uh, programming, and so ESPN is going to license out these these WrestleManias and all this type of stuff for people to to view it, and uh, ESPN has showed like three or four WrestleManias on TV. <clears throat> They, WWE likely get paid for that. But other than something like that, which probably helped um, cover the cost of them paying performers to actually perform, um, it's nonsense. So if your idea of capitalism equals profit, then I guess there's some profit to be had, but it's not much because they're actually losing more money than they will probably make. Uh, so Star is in the UK and says their national lockdown is appropriate. Um, I don't know why he would think that. He also added that there needs to be a rent and bills freeze since most of the economy is essentially frozen. Quote unquote, Star says, all of this stuff needs to be stopped. We need to be given a UBA to go out and get food. Or if you're able to get unemployment, great. 
this all just needs to stop right now. I don't see why there's any anything else to do as long as it's that that doesn't happen. People like this man will continue to do what they're doing and risk people's lives. Um, okay, so he's scaremongering. Of course, the media has done a lot of scaremongering. They just, you know, I, I like to thank the media because now my 60 year old schizophrenic father is you know, pitching a bitch because a bus driver died in Detroit from uh, the virus. And now he thinks that there are people out there basically giving folks the virus on purpose because all they talk about 24 hours a day is the goddamn virus and they're scaring a lot of people. And my dad is one of them. So I like to thank the media and David Starr for all this scaremongering. In reality, though, professional wrestlers, at least the WWE and AEW wrestlers, are well let's just say wwe i can't i can't claim <laughs> i can't claim for AEW after seeing some of their roster but a lot of wwe guys are in peak physical condition some of them are a little bit old like you know goldberg and undertaker they they are a concern yes but you know if you think that guys who spent you know 20 15 years 20 years in the gym are at risk and, and going to die from this virus then you're absolutely wrong and have no fundamental understanding of this virus Unless they have, you know, uh, uh, a Roman Reigns where they have leukemia in their history or they have a history of bronchitis or asthma or something like that. They have, like, chest, history of chest problems, then maybe that ought to be a concern. But most of these guys um, are in, are fit and healthy and all that stuff. And the NBA and the NFL and all that, stuff, all that stuff shut down because they don't want to pay the players to play and they're not getting any revenue for it. That's why the NFL and the NBA shut down, not because they care about people's health. Because they already know these athletes are, are well-conditioned machines. They're perfectly fine. There's not it's nothing to be scared of. <laughs> nothing to be scared of, nothing to be worried about. But um, he said that we need, we need to be giving UBI for food. Um, David Starr doesn't understand. Other people have other expenses. Uh, it's not just food and rent and all this type of stuff. People have car notes. People have insurance. People have kids. People have uh, things that the collective doesn't know about. They have parking tickets and student loan debt. You know, they you know, it's all types of things. Some people were already in the hole when 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 everything shut down. They were already behind. They probably owed some money to some people like banks or something like that. They probably still owe a mortgage. And look, it's easy to just say shut everything down. Nobody gets paid. But eventually, the the bills do come in. You know, this isn't this isn't forever. And you can't just freeze things and be like, oh, well, we're, we're freezing it. And then that's it. It's like, no, you still you're still using lights. You know, you're still using the water, you know, and these things are heavily regulated where, you know, it, it's paid by. And you can say, well, we're not going to charge water. I know some places are saying we're not charging water. We're not charging rent. But you're still going to expect expenses that come with these things in other words if you're going to tell rent landlords they can't charge rent then you know is the landlord going to say well i'm not fixing the stairs you know i'm not fixing the pipes because that will cost me money and i'm not making any money you know we're not we're not asking that question we're just saying that we should we should swoop in and there's a there's an anime called um trigun right and in trigun there was this really neat scene that taught me a lot about uh the the idea of the people there were two brothers there was vash and knives and um they were vash was the good guy knives was the, ba was the bad guy they were twins so there was obviously like you know the good twin bad twin and the two of them were watching uh, a fly was stuck in a spider's web and uh knives killed the spider he took the spider in his hand he crushed it and Vash got upset. He was like, what are you doing? Like, why would you do that? And then he was like, um, and then Knives said, the, well, the spider was going to eat the fly. And then Vash says, no, we could have, we could have saved the spider. We could have saved the fly by, you know, getting the fly off the, off the, co off the web. We could have saved it. And then, then he, then Knives said, well, the spider would have starved. That's what you listen to. That's, you know, that's the, the idea of, you know, um, of this whole situation is sure you can go in and, 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 and save the flies that are caught in the spider's web, but then you're just going to starve the spiders. You know, like if it's hunt, hunters have the same problem, right? If you go out and you say, uh, they're, you know, we're not going to shoot deer, then it becomes an overpopulation of deer. Right. So then, you know, you might, th that might attract larger predatory animals like wolves or something like that. 
And then you go out there, and you, then you have to turn around and have to shoot the wolves, right? And this is the, what, the problem that we have in, in uh, hunting in the United States. But this is what David Starr is talking about. You know, step in, save the, the flies that are caught in the spider's web, and then starve the spiders because fuck spiders, you know, <laughs> fuck landlords and fuck all those guys who, who, who also help the economy run. They don't deserve to be helped. But let's continue. With the current situation, now would be a good time as any for pro wrestlers to be a part of a union. Star was asked how different this period would be if wrestlers had a union. Well, they would be having more leverage to speak up for their health and safety. They would be able to be unified to just hold out of work if it's not safe for them. Star said before adding that while wrestler participation is labeled voluntary, it still feels like things are being held over their heads. I don't know. I don't care about your feelings, but let's keep going. A union would allow them to negotiate and give them more leverage. There's plenty of other things that a union would benefit, especially on a corporate level. On the indie level, if there was a union and we were all paying dues, maybe we, sh we could have some, a strike fund or a wellness fund. Some kind of pot that we could all go into for a time like this, an injury fund that we could use, pay for by our union. There's a million things you could have discussions with amongst your coworkers or how you could fight to get things that benefit you. It could be massively beneficial. You don't need a union for a wellness fund or an injury fund. You can start that all on your own, David Starr, whenever you're ready, sir. Um, and this is the conversation I've had with David Starr on Twitter before. I think he blocked me or I don't, I'm not sure if he blocked me or if I just got tired of it and, and walked away from the conversation. So I don't want to call him an asshole and say you blocked me. But um, you don't need a union to start a strike fund or a wellness fund. You can do that whenever you're ready. You know, you can just, you know, <laughs> you can just literally start an organization and say, you know, um, this is a wrestler wellness fund. This is for people who can't cover injuries and surgeries and stuff like that. Um, retirement and stuff like that. You can do that all on your own. You don't need a union. What he needs a union for is to make sure that other people can pay in, to make sure people pay into it. Because then you're going to have government mandate that people pay into it. Okay, and that's the that's the thing. Um, let's talk about unions for a minute. Uh, unions, uh, they do a couple of things. They privilege seniority over uh, talent. So in other words, if you're really good, this is something that's kind of avoided in sports unions usually. But they will usually um, privilege people who have been there longer versus people who are new to the game. So if I worked in the UAW, um, I could not get a promotion that was not also offered to somebody who had been there longer than me. So if I was better than them at something, I couldn't get a promotion unless other people who came before me had already turned down the promotion. That's one of the knocks on the union. But you could also, you know, you could circumvent that. Um, uh, in sports by because you know the, the new the newest draft picks are always going to make a lot of more money than people who have been in the league for 10 years because if you've been in the league 10 years and you're not like a superstar athlete you're not like Tom Brady or anything like that um you've got more wear and tear on your body you've probably had surgeries you you know they they know what they're getting by looking at you and they can properly assess your your um, the risk of taking you in so and then they also unions constrict the industry um, is gatekeeping essentially if you want to be part of this industry you have to pay us that's essentially what a union is it's a middleman between talent and man it, there's already a middle middleman between talent and um corporate it's called an agent and wrestlers have agents they all have booking agents you can go to any wrestler's uh twitter page and there's for booking send emails to and they'll they have some kind of manager that will discuss whether they can, you know, discuss, you know, whether they're open to do some meet and greet or something like that. They all have this. The idea, David Starr is working on this antiquated idea that, you know, you broke your neck on Saturday and you have to be, get, get back in shape before the next Saturday or you don't get paid. No, a lot of these people have downside guarantees where they get paid, whether they work or not. Um, they get paid, you know, just for showing up, whether they actually show up on the show or not. So WWE in specific, um, has people who get paid just for making the trip. So if you show up at the show, you get paid, you know, even if you're not used. So this idea that we need a union is like, no, it, it just doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. But uh, again, unions constrict the industry. There is no industry that that is unionized that is actually growing and expanding. Um, look at the, <laughs> look at the airline industry, heavily unionized. They need bailouts. And people will say, well, it's, Due to the financial trickery that the uh, CEOs and all them guys are doing. And it's like, yes, yes, it is. 
That's part of it. That's always going to be part of it is uh, the corporate part is still going to do what they want to do. But you also have increased labor costs. And um, that's, that's also what unions do. They increase labor costs. So let's say you get your union and you say, um, yay, we're going to force Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar into having medical, you know, even though they're multimillionaires, we're going to make sure Vince McMahon can pay them, uh, is going to get them a uh, uh, health insurance. So if you're an athlete, um, that's like being, that's an at-risk person. So if you're an insurance company, you're going to charge athletes more because athletes make money off their body and they're physically, they're in physically demanding industries. So it's just like if somebody had diabetes or if somebody had um, a, a heart condition, they're going to be uh, at higher risk of using your insurance or you're going to charge them more. So you charge all of these wrestlers, it's 200 wrestlers, you're going to ship that money to Vince McMahon and say, Vince, this is the cost of insuring all of these damn wrestlers. Vince McMahon, so as, again, spiders and flies, Vince McMahon is going to look at that and say, okay, I have to pay for Randy Orton's insurance and Brock Lesnar's insurance and Roman Reigns' insurance, all these multimillionaires, I have to pay all their insurance. And then he's going to look down and he's going to say, you know what, I have, I, you know, looking at any given gate, looking at any given merchandise, financial sheet, balance sheet, he's going to look and say, okay, in order to pay for Randy Orton's insurance and the insurance on all of these buildings and all this type of stuff that I have to pay for, uh, and no doubt, you know, if the wrestlers get insured, then this, you know, the cameraman are going to be insured, just like Hollywood and all that stuff, right? Costs are going to go up. So you're going to have to, again, shrink the industry. You're going to have to release people. So you're going to have to start having Vince McMahon say, all right, in order to pay for Andy Orton and Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns and Undertaker and all these guys to have health insurance, I'm just going to release Dana Brooke, Apollo Crews, uh, Heath Slater, and so-and-so. You know, I'm just going to let them go. Because, you know, this is what happens in real life, right? In real life, when, you, when they renegotiate these contracts in the UAW or whatever, they always then have to, bring, have to let people go. If they can, they're going to let people go. And then they're going to bring in temps, right? They're going to bring in um, people who don't, who who are not working uh, for the minimum wage set by the union, who don't have health insurance as de demanded by the union, and uh, they're going to come in and work and then get sent home. And that's probably going to end up being more temps in the company than people who who are actually benefiting from the company. And that's just kind of how it works, you know. Eventually, there's you know some of these companies are full of temps. And they're, you know, they work, you know, 90 days, 100 days or whatever. And then they get sent home and they go somewhere else. You know, that's shrinking the industry. Another way of shrinking the industry, if you take a union, uh, really only two or three companies will be able to pay it. Maybe AEW and WWE. Um, if you unionize wrestling, Ring of Honor and Impact will essentially die. Everything else that's under Impact, if Impact, is, if Impact and Ring of Honor, which are multi-billionaire companies, by the way, because they're both owned by television networks. If you unionize wrestling, they will shrink their rosters as well. If they don't go out of business, because again, ROH and Impact do not draw big audiences and they don't also don't charge a lot for tickets. So if you unionize wrestling and the, and the labor costs increase, you're going to have to tell, you're basically saying, we're going to have to let people go. So there's a lot of people who are working in the industry right now, having fun, Probably some of those same people who are complaining that Braun Strowman doesn't care about their their their, um, their little indie um, wrestling show and they're not being paid enough to take care of themselves. A lot of those people are end up not working, which might be for the best because then you know maybe some people will actually find some fucking talent and not have to you know run a show of getting hit in the head with fluorescent light tubes or um, doing kung fu stunts. So you're going to shrink the industry. So if you really love wrestling, you don't want the industry to shrink. Because then you're not going to be able to have more of wrestling, right? And the, that's the that's the only thing about you know wrestling right now that's really good is that is there is something for everybody. Even I don't like the hardcore stuff. There is still some of that stuff for everybody because people are willing to take whatever money that they want and run these shows. But if you mandate that certain people have to get paid a certain amount of money to operate within this union or operate within this industry, you're going to kill that. So if you enjoy indie wrestling, you don't want a wrestling union. You just don't want it. And if you say, well, the indie wrestlers will operate outside of the union, then it's like, okay, well, you're going to give them this benefit 
to quote unquote. So it's like if you are under the idea that paying people, you know, that the, that the union is not going to operate outside of the, the top four, you know, WWE, AEW, Impact and Ring of Honor, that everything else is going to be non-unionized. So what you're saying is it's okay to exploit people <laughs> on this end, but it's not okay to exploit people on this end, you know. And once you have, you then you have to grapple with that morally, and with your concept of equality and all that garbage. You have to deal with that, you know. But I guess if that's your opinion that you know inequality is unfair, you have to then explain why it's okay for Randy Orton to have multi get paid millions of dollars. And have health insurance and Apollo Crews to lose his job. Because I guarantee you that's what's going to happen. Guarantee it. Uh, let's see. Let's continue. There's peer pressure in the locker room. And that could influence talent deciding whether or not to perform. You don't want to say no and get singled out. If you feel comfortable, start start discuss that. When you, when you boil it down to an individual choice like that. Which is individual choice he's talking about. Uh, individual decisions to perform at these shows. It's easy to get singled out. I know some people get annoyed by the term toxic masculinity as merits to it, but that's kind of nails it. And this is the case in point is if it's down to individuals and they, and they decide it isn't safe. Every man listening to this understands what we're talking about. You get bullied and picked on, especially in an environment with alpha males, but don't leave it down to the individual come together as a collective. For starters, let's start at the bottom. Once again, the collective does not exist. The collection is the collective is a, um, is a fiction. All, everything that you do comes down to your individual agenda. Again, like I said earlier, every, individuals can risk assess on their own. Um, I remember uh, watching the ECW documentary and Nunzio was talking about people not being paid in, in ECW, which was a big deal. You know, Paul Heyman was not paying his talent. Nunzio said, I did not have kids at the time, so it didn't really bother me to get paid irregularly. But for the guys like Bam Bam Bigelow, who had children and a mortgage and all that type of stuff, they couldn't deal with it, so they left. That is individual risk assessment, right? Nobody can force you to do something you don't want to do, all right? Now, David Starr has a small point in the quote-unquote toxic masculinity argument, only in so much as you see people who are being assholes to Roman Reigns for backing out of his WrestleMania match. Um, that is complete bullshit. The guy has a compromised immune system. There's nothing you can do about that. It makes complete sense for him to back out. And they'll, those guys are assholes anyway. But an even bigger point for David Starr would be the the old fighter's pride. The when you know in the UFC when a guy's taking like a bunch of unprotected headshots and then he gets up and is like, "No, I'm fine, man." Like his eyes all swollen shut and he's bloody all over his face and it's clear the guy can't fight. He can't even stand up and he still wants to fight. Yes. Okay. That's the, that's the concept of toxic masculinity of, you know, you know, I can t I still want to, I still want to do this, even though it's not good for me or I, you know, or other people egging you on to do something that's not good for you. But WWE has let it be known that certain things are optional. What matter of fact, all things are optional in the world. If we're being quite honest, you know, um, nobody can force you to work. That's called slavery. So, you know, uh, and even in slavery times, guys find, a, you know, it, people find a way not to work. OK, so at the end of the day, and I, and I guarantee you that, you know, if you don't work, people still want to be paid. Right. So but, but let's take that off the table for a minute. Let's just talk about the work part. WWE has um, said that the Saudi shows are, are, op are, are optional. You don't have to do the Saudi shows. Um, and of course people will say, oh, you're, someone's going to be buried because they didn't do the, the Saudi show. It's like, guess what? Daniel Bryan hasn't done it. And he got the WWE championship the same week. I saw an article saying that, you know, they're punishing guys for not doing the Saudi show. Daniel Bryan won the WWE title, didn't go to Saudi Arabia at all. Uh, so th that doesn't make any sense. Hulk Hogan, ultimate warrior guys of the past, they were notorious for that doesn't work for me, brother. I'm not doing it. I'm not working with this guy. I'm not doing this angle. Uh, I don't want to deal with this. This guy's going to hurt my brand. This guy's going to hurt me. I don't want to work with him. That's notorious in wrestling. This idea that you can't stand up for yourself because you're going to get bullied into doing it is false. If anything, it's going to be the other way around where the collective is more likely to bully you into doing something you don't want to do. And, and, and so much as 
uh, than in wrestling. Because, hey, individually, if everybody has an individual risk and everybody's doing individual risk assessments and they're saying, look, it's not that big of a deal. I can work the show. Again, they're not scared in peak physical condition. They're they taking care of themselves. They're not worried about this whole uh, thing. They can work the show. And there's no bigger SJWs in wrestling as far as social justice warriors, as far as believing um, a lot of the liberal stuff and probably the liberal media than Sami Zayn and Daniel Bryan. And if those guys are working the empty arena shows, then I trust their judgment. Okay. I trust that nobody's putting peer pressure on Daniel Bryan or Sami Zayn. Um, and both of whom refused to work the, uh, the Saudi shows, by the way. And it doesn't look like they've been de-pushed for it or harmed in any other way. Um, there was a, also a story of Rob Van Dam not wanting to do the tribute to the troop show. He was not punished for that. Um, there's just, you know, uh, Chris Jericho was offered a spot to do the Chris Benoit. Was it Chris Benoit or the Eddie Guerrero tribute show? One of the two of them. He didn't do it. He was not punished for it. Again, when something is presented to you, everything in life is optional. And as an independent contractor, you don't have to do anything. This idea that you're going to be bullied into it or shamed into it by the locker room is bullshit. It's bullshit. What, what, what the most can happen is somebody go to Vince and bury you. Oh, I don't want to work with this guy. He's an asshole. I don't want to work with this guy. He's a coward. I don't want to work with this guy. And he could just overrule it. <laughs> so, so what difference does it make? You know, the idea that, you know, um, he said, if it's, if it's down to individuals, they can decide it isn't safe. Yeah. And people can always say that. People can always say it's not safe for me to, to do certain things. You know, guys, some guys don't want to take power drivers. You know, um, they talk about this stuff before the match. David Starr knows this. He's working a gimmick. Okay. He knows that when you talk to a guy before a match, he's saying, look, man, I don't, I don't, you know, ease up on the Boston crab. I got a bad back, you know, uh, you know, watch the potatoes, blah, 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 blah. I mean, come on, man. This is wrestling. We know this. Uh, he then questioned, David Starr, then questioned what exact amounts or bonuses the wrestlers are receiving for putting their health in danger. Are they getting any, any, any bonuses? Are they getting hazard pay for doing all this? Are they getting any extra incentive to do this? Because they are losing out on money from live events. Then they're traveling constantly back and forth because they're not all stationed in Florida. Absolutely correct. And this is where somebody understands that the concept of individuality not everybody is in florida so some people are are dry like edge if i remember correctly drove 17 hours to do his promo on raw knowing that nobody was going to be in the building okay you, you mean to tell me that edge a guy who's like 45 years old is being peer pressured to drive 20 hours to to, to do a promo in front of an empty arena you're going to have to show me some uh you're going to have to show me some um some evidence of that buddy but in the question of whether they're getting hazard pay, I mean, they might, you know, I don't know. He doesn't know either. And that's another reason why he shouldn't be speaking on this type of stuff, because he doesn't know. Right. And this is also a constant thing with David Starr is that he talks out of his ass or he talks to the lowest, the low hanging fruit. He claims to have friends in NXT who are uh, people who are, you know, maybe don't have that much experience or. They just, they don't want to, maybe, maybe they might be on the NXT UK brand, which doesn't draw a big audience and all that type of stuff. <clears throat> so they don't make a lot of money. And then he tries to extrapolate from that. He can't do that. He doesn't have enough information to make a, all of these quote unquote collective decisions. And nobody can. Nobody knows your individual circumstances except you. Okay. So you are a business person. You need to make business decisions all on your own without influence from people like David Starr who don't know what the fuck they're talking about at any point in time who are just running their goddamn lips because they either A, have an agenda or B, working a goddamn gimmick. Okay? Yes, not everybody lives in Florida and guess what? They're, some of those guys are taking the chance to come to, the, come to work their show because they like it. They want to do it. You know, the money is worth it. Whatever is worth it, they're doing it. I don't think that they're being bullied into doing it because you can't bully anybody into doing it. You know, there's this idea, again, that the NFL and the NBA came together and said, we care about our health. We're not doing it. Instead of the owners and all those people looking at it and saying, hey, look, we're going we're gonna to miss out on millions of dollars because we have to pay you guys to play, whether we make money or not on the television and on the 
uh, ticket sales and concessions and all that stuff, whether the owners make money or not, the players get paid anyway. So the owners shut the shit down because they want their money. You know, <laughs> you know, Vince McMahon is basically running a charity at this point because even though, yes, the performers can't make money off of merchandise, they're probably making more money by performing in front of, no, in front of an empty arena because there needs to be content. And, you know, they're probably going to make a, a big bank because WrestleMania is a big payday anyway. But David Starr doesn't know what he's talking about. Are they getting any bonuses? He should probably ask his, all his, his many friends that he claims he has in the wrestling business. He should probably just ask them um, and, and leave it at that. But I definitely disagree with his fundamentally with his business practices. He doesn't know what he's talking about. <clears throat> so what do you guys think of this video? Um, that's all David Starr has to say. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a lot of people. You know, look, David Starr is a gimmick. You know, he's a guy who's worked in the wrestling business a long time. Well, at least for, I never heard of him until he started doing this communist gimmick. And he is, he is a legitimate communist. I'm not calling him that because libertarians call everybody a communist. No, uh, he's legitimately a communist. A lot of this stuff that David Starr wanted to do, he could do it himself. He could start a worker co-op himself if he wanted to. He's not going to. He could start a wellness fund if he wanted to. He's not going to. It's all about him being a parasite on the rest of the industry and... You know, him claiming he was blackballed when he's really just an asshole. You know, it's this this sort of stuff is just is it's just how it is. But it's up to the performers and I and I say leave it to the performers to make their individual decisions because they are the people with expenses and families and all that type of stuff. They know what they need. And some people don't need the money and so therefore they won't do it. Some people are scared and some people aren't. But we don't know that. I don't know. Like, the only person that I know can't do the show or pulled out of the show is Roman Reigns. That's it. I don't know if they asked Apollo Crews to do the show and he said no. I don't know if they, if they asked Rey Mysterio to do the show and he said no. I don't know if they asked Samoa Joe, who I think is injured at the time, uh, right now, and to do the show and he said no. I don't know that. I don't know any of that stuff. And guess what? They could ask them to do anything at any point in time and they can say no. They could pitch an idea and say, hey, Samoa Joe, we want you to go out in, in green hair and white face paint and be Doink the Clown Part 2. And he could be like, nah, I ain't doing that. You know, <laughs> he could do that at any time. You know, they always shoot down ideas and different things and say, I'm not making a trip. I'm not coming. You know, we've seen Steve Austin say that he's not showing up to shows. Uh, CM Punk walked out on his contract. You know, this, these type of things happen. If you are, and people don't blame them for it. Like, nobody ever said, well, some people say CM Punk is a piece of shit for walking out of his contract, but not many, right? If you don't want to do something, you don't have to do it. That's, that's the end-all, be-all in this situation. You don't need a union. You don't need government. You don't need anything. If you don't want to do something, truly being a man or being an adult, period, is saying, I am not doing it, period. That's the essence of being an adult. You cannot be forced to do anything. You can be you can be incentivized into doing it, of course. There is the carrot. You can say, oh, I'll give you more money if you do it. But then it's up to you then to, to make that decision. Okay? And if you make the decision to do it, then that's fine. But I don't blame anybody who doesn't want to work a random Raw or SmackDown. Sometimes people take time off because they got kids and the kids are sick. Sometimes people take time off because they're injured or it, it just, you know, it might be okay to take a break this time or something like that and we will ne we the fans will never know and, uh, and unless even if you do a shoot interview very rarely do they ask oh why didn't you show up to this show why didn't you show up to that show they usually don't even go into all that stuff this is just a gimmick this guy's working because he's a fucking midget with no talent or the most you know plain wrestler ever and he likes doing outrageous stuff to get attention just kind of like just like um the Joey Ryan dick spot and all of the uh, fluorescent light tubes across the head. When you don't have talent, you start doing crazy shit to get attention. And David Starr being a communist online is just to get attention. He doesn't believe. I doubt he really believes this shit because he's not trying to do it. He, he could get the money to do a worker co-op if he wanted to. He doesn't want to do it. He can get the money together to, to start a wellness fund, which I actually think is a good idea. But he's not going to do it. He wants other people to do it. 
and that's a and that's and that should tell you right there that there's something wrong with, with with his ideology. If it doesn't require him to actually act, but to actually for him to sit back and wait for somebody else to act, or or even worse, wait for the government to take care of it. You know, if it was a, such a big problem, he would have taken care of it by now. But he's not going to. You know, signal boost those GoFundMe's. You know, instead of starting up a a, a, a fund for wrestlers. But uh, this is nonsense. And David Starr needs to stop it. And other people need to stop bigging him up online. Um, and, you know, if, but let's end this here. Let's end this there. Uh, like, share, and subscribe this video to, the, to this channel. Um, I like talking about, I really don't like talking about politics.